Hello and welcome back to the Eagle Griffin Games vlog, and this week we'll interview a co-designer of Rococo Deluxe, Stefan Malls. Next, we'll give you a sneak peek at an upcoming expansion to Vital Lacerda's best-selling and highly rated game, On Mars. We'll then take a look at a couple of new releases, Rococo Deluxe, as well as Sagani, which is the spiritual successor to Uwe Rosenberg's Spiel des Jahres nominee, Nova Luna. And then we'll finish it off with a game giveaway, but let's first update you on some current and upcoming Kickstarters. The Illumination and Road to Canterbury Pledge Manager is now open, so be sure to complete your pledge and use the stretch credits you earned during the Kickstarter campaign to add on additional games. In a previous vlog, we told you about the upcoming Baseball Highlights the Dice Game designed by Mike Fitzgerald. Here's a graphic preview of Football Highlights the Dice Game, which is an expansion to Baseball Highlights the Dice Game, so mark your calendars because it's right around the corner. These are coming to Kickstarter on March 11th. Stefan Malls is a co-designer of Rococo Deluxe, which includes the Jewelry Box expansion, and he's also designed an expansion to Altiplano, the Traveler, and Valparaiso. So let's welcome in Stefan Malls. Board games were always part of my life. It started uh, at social events at my granny's birthday for example where we played something like Mensch ärgere dich nicht that is Pachisi and uh, Malefits that's Barricade and card games of all kinds and checkers and something like that and uh, it evolved from there to more complex games over the years and during school and during my university time we had regular playing groups where we played things like Monopoly or Risk or other card games and um, for my son it started very early i think he was two years old when he also started with these simple games like uh, pachisi and with all those really good um, children's game that we have nowadays and um, it evolved very fast to things like maybe ticket to ride or um, settlers and so on and uh, at the age of eight or nine years he played all the things that we usually play now so it didn't matter to him if there was a 12 or 40 years requirement printed on the box he played it anyway we started designing games at a very boring summer vacation um, it was holiday for my son, it was um, holiday for me, but my wife had to work, so there were two lonely guys at home and didn't know what to do with each other. So we played some games, and uh, during those games we always discussed about things in the game, what was good in our opinion, what was bad in our opinion, and uh, so we just decided to try to do it better and to develop our own game. Uh, of course, the first design wasn't that good, and it took us, I think, 16 designs until we had something that was good enough to be published. I think there's no hard part in this cooperation, because uh, we both know each other that well, and we are used to discussing everything openly and vividly, so um, it's a lot of discussion, but it always brings good results and uh, we seldom have a point where we are angry at each other. We are just trying to get the better game for both of us. So uh, it's, it's just a good way to work for us because we are quite different in our approach to games. While I'm more an intuitive player, he's more a calculating player. And overall, that brings out the best results, I think. There's not a special theme I want to explore. It's more about the gaming situation I want to create. It's about a feeling I want to create in a game. So um, the theme mostly comes second, but uh, I prefer something like craftsmanship. Um, I prefer games where you build something and where you are more or less peaceful. You have to have interaction, of course, but 
it has to be a peaceful game, not a take that situation. I don't like that very much. The inspiration was to build a game about creating beautiful things, about crafting things, about um, different levels of education like the masters, journeymen and apprentices. And um, I think uh, the game is still this much beloved because it has everything. It has a beautiful illustration, a set of illustrations. Um, it has very intu intuitive rules in most aspects, at least. And it is a very friendly game. You have a lot of interaction, but you still don't play against other players. You only play for yourself, but what I whatever you do, it almost always uh, changes the setting for the other players. So you can plan, but you can't be 100% sure if you can do what you have planned. When I'm not playing or designing games, um, I'm editing game rule books, I'm uh, testing other prototypes, I'm having a small company uh, that is uh, designing a technical design software. I am reading very much. I'm reading about 50 books a year. And uh, well, I, I think like almost anybody today, uh, I'm streaming a lot. So um, I'm, al I'm almost always busy. <laughs> Alert! Sensors indicate that aliens are invading the famous Red Planet. Long have the conspiracy theorists predicted this. The threat to your mission is too great. You must take action. Will you be able to prevent the infectious spread of these beings bent on expanding to every habitable planet in the galaxy? Or will you play for the other side, a species trying to establish a colony on Mars, blithely oblivious to the danger their expansion represents? unaware that there are others out there eager to keep humans where they belong, on Earth. On Mars, Alien Invasion is the much-anticipated, somewhat cooperative expansion to Vital Lacerda's best-selling and highly rated On Mars base game. Though this expansion was originally going to be named Surviving Mars, Eagle Griffin Games made the decision to change the name to On Mars Alien Invasion to better reflect the theme and content of this expansion. The game narrative is contained in four chapters of a story written by Nathan Morse. Gameplay contains four new and different ways to expand upon and play the base game. You'll play one versus many, completely cooperatively, and even solo if you wish, depending on the chapter. Included are four fresh and completely replayable ways to establish colonies on Mars. On Mars Alien Invasion will be launching on Kickstarter on May 13th. In Rococo Deluxe, you're the owner of a distinguished tailoring business endeavoring to increase your prestige. Each turn, you play an employee card that allows you to perform a task, such as hiring a new employee for your staff, tailoring exquisite gowns and frock coats to rent or sell, or funding some of the many decorations. However, employees are not always able to perform all tasks, so you must plan carefully how you direct them, especially as each employee grants a unique bonus, including some that generate prestige. The grand ball ends after seven rounds with a huge fireworks display and final scoring. You'll gain prestige points for the sumptuous gowns and frock coats that you've rented out to the guests at the ball, certain employee bonuses, and the festive decorations that you've funded. Whoever has collected the most prestige at the end of the game wins. Rococo Deluxe contains the previously released Jewelry Box expansion, the Festivity Dresses expansion, and the Fancy Dresses promo, as well as a new Madame Du Barry solo mode expansion. This version of Rococo Deluxe includes premium components, including custom poly resin lace and thread tokens, gold foil heat stamped wooden player markers, velveteen cloth bags for garments, silk and jewelry tokens, and upgraded punch boards for the garments, silk, and coins. It's for one to five players, takes one to two hours to play, is for ages 14 and up, and it's available now. Click the link below to be brought to the product page. Mm -hmm. 
Zagani is a game for one to four players designed by Uwe Rosenberg where achieving harmony between the natural elements of earth, water, air, and fire is the central goal of the spirits that populate this world. Players will be selecting spirit of nature tiles and placing it in front of them in their own tableau. This is a vessel that's holding a spirit inside and will be worth a certain amount of points depending on the tile you took if you're able to place all the discs for this tile. On your next turn, you might get another orange fire tile. You can place it adjacent to other tiles and you can reorient it any way you like. And this one will be worth 10 points if you're able to complete it. And since this tile's orange flame is pointing to another orange tile, this can be covered. Same for this tile, pointing to this one. You're trying to complete all of the different arrows on each tile, like this one is completed, so we'll flip it over and get one point. And flipping it over reveals the spirit that was within that vessel. As the game goes on, you'll be trying to set yourself up for big turns, like being able to cover multiple discs, because even placing one tile can allow you to place multiple discs on many of the tiles, even ones that point to and through other tiles and even empty spots to get to the correct color. And those colors are representing the water, earth, air, and fire. And you can look even further ahead because by placing this tile, you're able to complete two of these all with one move being able to get the last element covered. So you're trying to plan for now, but also for the future. But you also have pressure to finish tiles quickly because if you ever run out of sound discs and need to place one, you get a cacophony disc, which is worth minus two points at the end and you cannot get rid of them. And as players select these spirit of nature tiles, there'll be less and less for the other players to select. This creates tough choices because when there's only one left, you can take this one or decide to leave it behind to the intermezzo storage area and instead taking the top tile from the closest stack and you don't know what's on the other side, but you do know the amount of points it's worth and what color it is. And if the intermezzo ever gets filled, players will be drafting from these tiles before new ones come out. And players will continue playing until one player has reached the threshold for a certain player count. Whoever has the most points at the end of that round is the winner. And the game has both basic and advanced solo game rules for you to try by yourself. Sagani takes 45 minutes to play and is for ages 8 and up. And you can click the link below to be brought directly to the product page. I just showed you a quick overview of Sagani and you can win your very own copy. One copy will be given away and to enter simply subscribe and comment below. That's it. Now when commenting, we encourage you to let us know your favorite segment of the vlog this week and what you'd like to see in future vlogs. Now you have one week from when this video is launched to enter. Also on eaglegames.net, you can get $5 off of Sagani using the code word FIRE. That's F-I-R-E. And that promo code is good from one week from when this video is launched. Well, I hope you enjoyed this week's Eagle Griffin Games vlog. And you can get the playlist link below to see all the past vlogs. And we'll see you next week. Mm -hmm.